We're going to try this again. Let me know if you can hear me. Um, we've been having some audio issues with Facebook. I've rebooted my computer and it seems that it doesn't matter if I'm wearing a headset or not that when I'm on Facebook, when I'm on Zoom, I'm doing my calls, there's never a problem. But when it comes to Facebook, there seems to be an issue with the audio. So I'm just testing it right now. Let me know if you can actually hear my voice or does it cut out every second or third. Hey, Aura, what's up, sister? Nikki, what's going on? Leslie, I love that you're here. And yes, it's great that you're here. Can you hear me or is it still cutting out? Please give me a heads up. Let me know if I have a thumbs up from you. Sounds so much better. Okay, good. Ah, oh, I think I fixed it. It was. Uh, it's not you. It's me. This is this is the key. Please write that down as a uh, something that's going to help most of your relationships. This is what how I managed to convince Diana to marry me was. I keep whenever we get into arguments, I keep telling her, Hey, 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 hey. It's not you. It's me. So now that uh, share your message, need to have you back on my show. I'd love to have you. I'd love to be there, my dear. So check this out. This is a really good one because Aura and I, is, Aura is like my sister that I've known for a long time. And we every time we, we, get, we get on the call, we, what do we talk about? Relationships. It's interesting. I'm talking, uh, this group is called Trigger Proof. And the concept is called Trigger Proof is because you unknowingly are constantly being triggered in your relationships in case you haven't noticed especially during the times of quarantine or self-isolation you're around your kids you're around your partner and everything that was incongruent everything that was incomplete is now in your freaking face you're now getting triggered with one another and the the things you've been sweeping under the rug all along in your relationship are now in your face. <laughs> and so there has been a sp check this out. This is true. True story. There has been a spike in requests for divorce, like attorneys, uh, like people filing for divorce at this time has gone up. Let me know if you can resonate or you can relate in the comment section. <laughs> if you can, uh, it, it's always, always me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let me know if you if you uh, can feel it in the comment section that all of the problems that you've been distracting yourself from from your life are now pretty much in your face. The reason why I really want I'm really excited to share this message with you is because for for those of you uh, if you've been kind of following my journey over the last five years I you know dabbled in talking about relationships but I wasn't really all about teaching people how to have great relationships because you can't really lead some someone somewhere where you haven't been if I looked at my type my relationships in the past they followed the same certain patterns let me know in the comment section if you can resonate with this if, if I looked at my relationships in the past I would consistently see similar patterns. I would date similar type of people. Uh, I, you know, there's three different types of relationships. There is the care less, l let me know which one you resonate with, okay? Type number one is the care less relationship. Care less meaning I have my values, you have your values. I don't give a shit about anyone else's values but my own values. And if you can't, keep up then peace out okay that's called a care less relationship and usually if you're in that space you play the role of the narcissist okay and I'm, and I'm not a fan of labels because truthfully we are everything you are a narcissist and you're a empath and a codependent like we all have every trait I'm just taking a snapshot so that you're able to look at yourself and then be able to kind of to see it so the first, the first part is the care less relationship. My values are greater than your values. This is usually the role of the avoidant in a relationship, the insecure relationship, avoidant. This is a, this is a um, unconscious relationship. The second part of the unconscious relationship is the careful relationship. Careful meaning I have my values, you have your values but your values are more important than mine. 
I'm putting aside what my values are, eclipsing all of my needs, wants, everything in service of what's most priority to you. That's called a careful relationship. Every single one of us have been through the, one of these before, and you're not, you're not one or the other. It's a dynamic process. That second one, careful, usually takes on the role of the codependent, the needy one. So if you look back, let me know if you can resonate with this, is that you sometimes play the role of the careful one, sometimes the careless. And you're not a single solitary label or an identity. You play both sides. You go from one to the other. And depending on your, dare I say it, nervous system regulation, you will play one or the other role. And depending, here's the other part, depending on who you're with, you might play a different role. Let me know if you've also seen yourself play one with one person and pl like play the narcissist in one relationship and play the codependent in another. So when I was younger, the relationships that I got into, I was the codependent one. And then I had my heart broken at a very young age, probably like around 18. And at that moment, I completely unconsciously shut my, my heart off to vulnerability. I didn't really fully let one in, let anyone truly in and open myself to vulnerability. So I had this wall up based on that wound. And so in every relationship, I would never fully commit because I didn't want to experience the same pain of that heartbreak that I experienced when I was uh, when I was just 18 years old. I was kind of like my first love. It was pretty traumatic for me. And so since then, I started showing up in my relationships as the distancer or the avoidant. And I would consistently uh, date the, the same type of woman who be, was the uh, anxious attached. So if I'm the avoidant, I'm going to uh, attract the opposite. Avoidance don't attract avoidance. Please get this. Avoidance do not attract avoidance. They're not they are, they're not attracted to one another. They within a very short period of time after dating, the person kind of like pulls away and the avoidant doesn't chase. They just like, eh, it peters. And and I've been in those situations where I'm like, oh, they're avoidant. What we have a tendency to do is we have a tendency to really connect with our opposite attachment style, attachment wound. And thus begins the dance of the trauma bond. And so I had a question that came in yesterday, uh, a couple days ago, saying, all right, so they were paying attention to my two days ago, two, three days ago, I did a, uh, I did a uh, Facebook Live on relationship red flags boom, my inbox started flooding with questions. One of them was really important that I wanted to address was like, okay, I've, 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 I can acknowledge I'm the distancer, I'm the avoidant. And what he said was, I show up in relationships, I really want to be in a relationship, but then what happens is she you know, wants to spend time with family and I don't really want to do that, that's not in my values. And we would always argue because she wanted me to be with family and I didn't really want to hang out with her family and friends, I just did wanted to do my own thing and that was a big problem for her. She couldn't handle that and I didn't really want to be around that and I was just like, that's why we broke up, was because of that. And so that's typical what an avoidant would would say and so I noticed I kept showing up as avoidant until two years ago I had the gift of a massive uh, breakup that had me wake up to this reality was that there was a whole science of attachment that I wasn't paying attention to. I was a wizard when it came to healing past wounds. I studied under John Demartini and Byron Katie and integrated my own kind of methodology that introduced body-based uh, embodiment. But uh, this whole concept of attachment was completely missing. And as soon as I understood why attachment wounds happen, where they come from, then I started shifting that entire unconscious relationship pattern that I had, whether I was the careless one or the careful one, to the third type, where the conscious relationship emerges, which is caring. My values are just as important as your values. And 
part of my work is to honor what your values are and help you get to where you want to go and hopefully if we're both in a conscious relationship together you can honor my values and help me get to where I want to go rather than going fuck your values it's all about me which is what the avoidant would say this is basically the question that I had he was basically saying I don't really want to hang out with family and fuck that right and so so how do you so where does that come from the first the first step is to really understand where it comes from and why it all makes sense instead of pointing fingers and blaming and playing victim when you really understand attachment wounds and you understand intergenerational trauma you get that there really are no victims we're all just in a victim perpetrator hero dynamic we're all in it we play the perpetrator sometimes we're the victim the other time victims end up becoming perpetrators and you know there's usually a hero in that drama triangle and so it's very wise for us the way that you heal here's the first step to healing which many people don't get to is to own where you are in that dynamic own your role and it's just a role it's not who you are it's just a role that you're playing and so the avoidant has had the experience growing up where their parent wasn't the parent really fully wasn't present for them attuned emotionally in other words a child experiences big feelings and they have massive emotions come up but if the parent is too busy not attuned emotionally not able to mirror back and understand and help the child make perfect sense of their feelings the child then slowly starts to realize that them having emotions and feelings it 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 won't produce the intended result which is to feel seen and understood in other words my feelings are not really considered and so i'm going to respond by shutting down and going inside and completely detaching and kind of kind of becoming a what's the word I'm looking for defensive detachment it becomes kind of like a defensive detachment my feelings don't matter so I'm not gonna really bother with them I'm just gonna learn how to self soothe and the illusion is that the distancer or the avoidant goes off on their own and then feels like a feels like a sense of relief uh, because they because they you know they don't like the person but the truth of the matter is the distancer or the avoidant feels a sense of relief when they when the other person is not around simply because during relationship there's a great deal of interpersonal anxiety going on so distancers avoidance actually are highly internally anxious within relationships they have high relationship anxiety so they need to get away and spa and, and and distance themselves so that they can then do all of their things to self-soothe just like when they were children because being in relationship didn't get their needs met didn't get didn't feel seen and didn't feel heard okay so what will happen is they will start to replay these same patterns in relationships completely unknowingly and this was the same that I would I would get into I would get into relationships with very needy women and I created it that way because then I didn't have to worry about feeling abandoned by them I knew that they would always be there because deep down inside I had this paralyzing fear of being left behind just like I did when I was two years old for a few months and had no clue what the heck was going on so I start showing up in relationships with women who are needy and completely codependent I set it up that way that's how I set up my marriage that's how I set up all sorts of relationships completely unconsciously so that I didn't have to worry about that discomfort of actually having to fear losing her I knew that I never would have to worry about that it was just like oh you're never gonna leave me it's all good and so uh, what would happen then is when I would was in the relationship the neediness it was highly anxious I was so like highly anxious so I would have to separate myself and then feel a sense of relief the illusion was that I was relieved 
the truth was that I deeply wanted to to, to uh, I deeply wanted a satisfying relationship but because I didn't know myself I didn't have an awareness of that I didn't wasn't aware of the trauma that was actually in my body the trauma that had me feeling the world is not safe and I'm going to die that's in the body that pretty much everybody's feeling right now because of the COVID-19 thing that hasn't been addressed because of that I would keep running into these patterns and my and my kind of distancing guess what would be a perfect lock and key for her abandonment issues was the, her neediness which was don't leave me just like when I was a child and I was left by my father or didn't have consistency with my mother she came in one day as one person next minute we didn't know what was going on so that lack of consistency creates a highly anxious state it's like a codependency on our, my next uh, broadcast tomorrow I'm gonna talk more about that if you're interested if you really want to know more because this is really the most important thing so the more that I would distance the more needy she became the more I would get triggered the more I would want separation and guess what that would do to her that would trigger her abandonment moon which would cause her to escalate and now we have two people who are completely the cognitive brain the conscious mind is completely offline and we're now living from a place of trigger living from a place of reactivity living from a place of a childlike wounded state we literally have two three-year-olds almost emotionally two emotional three-year-olds at each other let me know if that sounds familiar to you this is what conflict is this is what what happens in most unconscious relationships and if you're in that place if you're in that space let me know if the, if the if you can resonate hey Marnie what's up uh, let me know if you can resonate with this if you're in that space of the avoidant because the, uh, the this avoidant gentleman reached out to me and asked me this question and said could you do a training about this what I would say to you is your responsibility is first and foremost to become aware that this pattern is there and why it all makes sense your brain in order to heal needs to make sense of the past that's why in our trainings that we do the overview experience that we're having at the end of this month and the one that we're doing next week uh, for how to connect to a disconnected child I teach you how to make sense of the past not just here but make sense of it in the body so that you can recreate this feeling of I'm safe I got me okay which can only come from within you because if you don't do it you're always gonna c consistently look for it in your partner or a magical other person or a lot of you will look at look for it in your child leaving that child feel not seen and feel emotionally responsible for you which they call emotional incest when the parent then uses the child to as their emotional crutch and then does that same to their children and the same done to you and this is how the cycles keep going down right and I saw this and I was like holy shit so what did I do I moved back in with my parents <laughs> I did the unthinkable I put my place up my condo which I usually do my transmissions from which you see um, I put it up on Airbnb and then I moved in with my parents for an entire summer and I sat in every trigger that came up and I studied it this is why I I created the kind of brand called trigger proof not not it doesn't mean trigger less I get triggered a lot it just means curious using the trigger as information as a portal to self-healing so in the case of my um, avoidant friend who reached out your work is to then which he says well I didn't want to go and hang out with her family she constantly wanted me to be with her I didn't want to do that it wasn't according to my values what happens when you're a child and your needs are not met your emotional needs are not met you dissociate from your emotions you stay in your head and you get out of your body so you literally lack empathy for yourself you've stopped feeling so then what ends up happening is and this is not any fault of your own because you didn't know you show up narcissistic in your relationships 
you show up seeming like you don't give a fuck. And the truth of the matter is, how can you give a fuck if you haven't learned how to give a fuck about you and the wounded two-year-old, three-year-old within you that wasn't able to have their needs met emotionally? So then you then have a, a partner who's like, but you don't understand. I, but I don't understand. I just want you to come and hang out with my family. It's important to me. Why wouldn't you get that? And then she has the experience of you going, yeah, but it's not important to me. Fuck you, in other words. In other words, what you're saying to her is, fuck you. It doesn't really matter to me. This is what I want to do. Now, if you are in a relationship with one of these people, your tendency will want to point the finger and call them a narcissist. And I totally get that, why that, that would make sense. And that comes from not understanding their wound not understanding and empathizing with their wound. And I know how difficult that is because when you're with somebody who's narcissistic, you they don't have empathy towards you. And the last thing you want to do is empathize with them. But I'm telling you, that's the only way that you can heal that. I have a father who has extreme narcissistic tendencies and I'm constantly battling with the fact that why can't he see me and it was a moment that I realized it was an aha breakthrough moment when I moved in with him and I was living with him and we were going to war almost every day. My little child was begging to be seen by him and he was seeing me struggle after a breakup. And, 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 and what I didn't realize, because I was so hurt, what I didn't realize was the amount of guilt that that must bring up for a parent to see their child struggling. And wanting to fix it and solve it and his way is to let me buy you a chiropractic practice why don't you do this why don't you do that when all I wanted was him to empathize and see me and I was just like no that's not what I wanted I'm like why are you such a narcissist right and that was the dynamic that I was what I was going through and and uh, he was like why didn't you why don't you have em empathy you want my empathy why don't you empathize with me and then I was like well that's exactly what a narcissistic father would say, wouldn't, isn't it? <laughs> and then it clicked on me. Oh my God. This is, what if I did? What if I did do that? And the moment that I, that I put aside my need to be seen and I did the work myself instead of delegating it to other people to feel seen, to really do the work it takes to really get into the body and really feel that like that connection with your younger self, which is a lot harder than it sounds like, by the way. There's a process that I've created that helps people. And most of the time when people try, they're like, I'm not getting it. I'm not connecting to myself. I'm like, I know, because you've been abandoning yourself for so long that it's going to take practice. And this is what my clients that were the game that we're playing right now is making a number one priority to connect with ourselves because anything outside of that, you're basically wasting your time. Anything that you're going to learn outside of first doing that, what I discovered is it's like putting uh, software on a hard drive that is faulty, like with a virus in it. So your work, if you're in that place, is to first get connected and empathize in the body with that part of you that you fragmented from. And once you do, when you get that right, all of a sudden, you as the as the distancer who doesn't really have empathy, you're just too busy in, in a state of anxiety in the relationship. When you're in a anxiety in a relationship, there's no real empathy towards the other person. You're too much too busy playing victim to them. But what you don't realize is that this is the, the key to creating secure attachments. First is your ability to connect and empathize with you. And the biggest thing that's in the way is the thing that I hear most of you messaging me from, messaging me with and complaining about the same time is I'm afraid to go into my feelings because I'm afraid that if I go into my feelings, I'm never going to come out. This is the, what I hear constantly is, oh, I don't want to go back there because if I start crying, then I'm never going to stop. Rationally, it doesn't make sense because you're not going to cry for 20 years straight. <laughs> But our little child inside is deathly afraid. Our egos are deathly afraid of connecting with that part of us because we think that we're just going to 
just flood our emotions and never heal and recover from that but the exact opposite is true diving deep head first into that is your only way out and it's the thing you're most afraid of i get it this is the 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 work of the distancer avoidant this is mission impossible for many of you <laughs> i get it this is what i wrestle with consistently with my clients is this even even though they've invested even though they're all in they still we i don't want to say they because we we still resist dropping in and diving into our feelings and yet it's the one thing that's going to make us the most resilient it's the one thing that's going to help regulate our nervous system it's the one thing that helps us get deeply firmly rooted in our roots of who we are an understanding of who we are like who am I is found by people who say I don't know who I am as a telltale sign that you've dissociated from yourself from your feelings and I get it it makes sense because it's scary to go there this is what we deal with constantly it's like what do you do for a living I basically have studied 18 years in the healing profession and realized the only thing that I help people with is the most important thing is the thing that people resist the most and come up with all sorts of excuses with the most is to go diving headfirst into their feelings they'll do retreats to avoid them they'll go see counselors and talk once a week and just you know do talk therapy just to avoid going there I know and what you need is deep dark shadow work what I call dancing with your dark passenger it's a deep it's a very important part of the program that we teach and it's the scariest of all for many people who are used to being distancers or uh, avoidance and so your work is to go deep into the body stop getting into your head stop trying to talk your way out of it and go in and address what comes up for you when that person comes in and is acting needy okay and when you do and you do heal that younger part of you you are now able to share what your needs are you're now able to communicate your feelings you're able to emotionally regulate yourself and the tendency will come up like me this is this happened because I'm in I'm in a, a conscious seeking relationship that is uh, the, probably the most secure attached that I've ever had in my life uh, what happens is when we get into that I have this tendency where I do that part of me does want to distance does want to run away and now I'm able to recognize it and see it rather than be it that's the key and this is a practice and when you get this right you'll start to attract somebody at the same level that wants to take ownership for themselves as well that want to, that wants to take full ownership so the fact that you're an avoider and you reached out to me and you're like I want help and, and which I'm glad you're also I'm super stoked because you've already registered you're registering for the um, overview experience that's coming up on the 26th where we actually go in and teach you how to reset that uh, and, and to create to, to, to start the process of creating a secure attachment um, that's good news for you the good news is is that you can recognize that within you that's the first step your ego won't want to admit that first of all there'll be a painful if you're listening to me and you're getting triggered by what I'm saying that's a really good indicator that your ego is like not wanting to face it and that's the first step it's like feeling that Ugh, you know I always say the truth will set you free but first it will burn a hole in this in your soul <laughs> and so that trigger that pain that, that that's coming up if you're listening to me is a really good indicator of, of, of which direction that you are toward to go towards the majority that the masses will feel that trigger and then run the other way oh this is triggering me Nima triggers me I'm gonna run the other way and that's basically how you can guarantee that your world will continually keep getting smaller and smaller because you can't run from that because it's, it's not Nima it's that trigger it's somebody's gonna somebody else is gonna bring it up your children are gonna bring it up <laughs> your partners gonna bring it up so it's wiser for you to actually move towards this this is what trigger proof actually means is that I am willing to I am willing am I able yes but am I willing to go towards it 
And so I thought to myself, I'm living uh, completely incongruently two years ago. And I thought, all right, how do I get congruent with it? Well, I'm going to move in with my parents. And I'm going to run towards every trigger. And now I can honestly say that it's a work in progress consistently because relationships are dynamic. But I've never had a more uh, stable and secure relationship with my parents, able to just tell the truth, tell it like it is. I was, it's so, it's so, uh, quit calling me out and maybe I will cry for 20 years to make up for the time I didn't. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, I got to tell you, I've cried in the last, well, in the last year, 2018, I cried more in 2018 than I did in my previous 42 years of life. And I'm now the least anxious that I've ever been. During a global fucking pandemic, <laughs> I can honestly say, yeah, it hasn't been comfortable. I'm not going to sit here and just lie to you and say, oh, it's been a breeze, you know, helping people who are frantic all the time and having to pivot all of my events and all of that. Hasn't been a breeze. However, I've never felt more secure and confident in my ability to handle the unknown. And that's really the gift of becoming trigger proof. This is what you want to cultivate. What in, in, in times of change, the learners will inherit the earth while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that does not exist. And the, the, the skills that you are wanting to fully invest in is the skills of adaptability and resiliency right now. If you don't have them and you feel unhinged right now, well, now we know exactly which direction that you're wise to go towards and go all in for and not wait for mommy and daddy to come and save you or the government or the union or whatever that we're sitting here doing. This is all in with healing you, taking full responsibility. And so right now I can honestly say, believe you and also know that I'm understanding what you say in response is somewhat tongue in cheek. I cried for three hours Wednesday and actually survived. Way to go. I'm super duper proud of you, Leslie. That's awesome. So your work as an avoidant is to heal first and foremost, do the work, not just sitting here doing lines and columns. It's not fully the work. That is important work. And it's to be done after you go in and do your own internal work. Let's just see here. Yeah, I have an interview coming up in 15 minutes. I just want to make sure that I was, my timing was right. So uh, does that help? Has this been useful? Uh, have you, you know, any questions that you have? If you're an av avoidant, attachment avoidant, uh, uh, avoidant attachment style, or a, a, a distancer, or the narcissist, and you're no noticing that, I don't want you to start judging and blaming and shaming yourself because it's not your fault at all and it is your responsibility because here's the thing if you run a business and you have weaknesses like I really suck at accounting uh, all of that stuff not important and 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 the details and stuff and tech I really suck at the cool part about that is when you can run a business, you can delegate that to other people who are better than you at it. In relationships, you can't delegate your weaknesses to anyone. You are responsible for developing them. The question is, are you going to sit there in your, in your isolated little corner and say, no, nope, I just don't do relationships. I'm just avoiding them. Eh, I'm just avoiding them, which from my experience is usually a fear usually comes from a fear of rejection usually comes from wounds that haven't really been fully healed because deep down inside we all want connection deep down inside we all want to be seen and heard and loved for who we are but if we haven't done the work to actually give ourselves that then we avoid others and we show up in relationship and the anxiety within the relationship is too much for my body to handle so I distance myself to then create a, a relief because being in the relationship itself is too ang anxiety producing yet it's something I crave the most this is what a, an avoidant would want this is what an avoidant would be thinking and saying so if you're in a real what about if you're in a relationship with an avoidant do you want to know about that what, what, what if you're in a relationship with someone who just doesn't really want to deal and is in that narcissism? <sighs> my, my heart goes out to you. Um, this is something, if I was to 
you know, this was a, a revelation that I had when I was kind of alone a couple years ago going, oh man, my relationships are crap and it's time for me to take ownership of it. It was, I had to become, this was a thing that happened and it was, it hit me like hard right here. And it was like, you have to become the kind of person that you would want, you would want to marry. Become the kind of person you would want to marry. And if I was honest with myself, I wasn't, I wouldn't have married me a couple of years ago, for sure. I for sure wouldn't have. So what did that mean? Well, it meant to first start to treat myself with this, start to treat myself worthy of honoring. Start making promises to myself. This is what the work is. This is why I created the Intimacy Upgrade program. It was a revelation that I had no ability to, I was an avoidant. I didn't have intimacy. Uh, I didn't have an ability to really know myself because I was so dissociated from my feelings. I was just up here. I was very intelligent here, but I had no, uh, I had emotional intelligence, could see it in other people, but I didn't know how to self-regulate. I didn't know how to emotionally regulate myself. And I would be attracted to people in relationships who were in the same boat, who didn't know how to emotionally regulate, who our wounds were like perfectly entangled in a trauma bond. I wasn't in relationship, I was in bonds that were based on trauma. And I thought, okay, so I'm going to, I've made a lot of money, I've had a lot of relationships, I've been ups and downs. What's the holy grail of human existence? Here's what it is. A secure, attached, healthy relationship. If you don't have that, you don't have a healthy life. If you don't have that, there, you cannot express your full potential in this planet because here's why I believe this because the reason why I'm talking about this as a chiropractor is because most of the times I would see people coming in with health issues and if I just traced it back it was relationship trauma in other words if I didn't learn how to become better at loving just better at loving more empathy towards myself and other people then my experience of life this short time that I have left like what I'm 44 now I have what another 40 50 years left I, I have a say in how the second half of my life can be the first half of life is a giant mistake <laughs> we have no clue what the fuck <laughs> we're completely unconscious that we've been driven by these unconscious complexes we don't know that we don't know that we're not the ones in control. Either we're trying to rebel against everything mommy and daddy said or we're trying to be good and do exactly what mommy and daddy wanted for us. Either way, we're still entangled in those old complexes and we don't have personal authority in our lives. So it makes sense why we hit our mid 40s and we just look and we go, why are things not working? Well, because you don't know how to be the authentic you. You've been self-abandoning since you were a child for attach for the sake of attachment. And it's not your fault. And it's not even your parents' fault. That's the beauty of it. So when you can get out in what I call an overview perspective and you look and you see that these are all products of intergenerational trauma and I'm going to put my hand up and I'm going to take full responsibility of, of healing myself from that and becoming a self healer and becoming my own hero rather than looking for the government to fix me or a, 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 a therapist to solve my issue <clears throat> to take on that hero's journey and be the to be the healer of my own story using guides of course I, didn't, I couldn't get here without my guides but then to then step up and become the guide for others is my is what makes my heart sing because I can't lead you where I haven't been and I have had I believe I had no right to talk about relationships and I paused and I stopped helping people with relationships I'm like I'm, I'm nobody to talk until I've been able to manage to create a relationship that's secure attached and be able to navigate conflict in a way where instead of causing volatility to both of us to kind of escalate based on my understanding of the nervous system and how I can observe I can actually help her regulate and teach her how to help me regulate those wounded younger selves that we we are, we we are raised with that are part of us 
Let me know if that would be interesting to you to learn how to create healthy, secure attachments where both parties are taking full responsibility, number one, for themselves and their own healing, and number two, to be able to see your partner from a perspective that from their own wounding. And when you do, check this out. I want to show you something. I'm getting married to this person, Diana, next week. One week from tomorrow, I get married. Okay, but I'm not just marrying that marrying Diana. I'm marrying this little, this little one here, this little, and she gave me permission to share this. This little one here. This is my, this is my future wife, <laughs> right here. And if I can enter this agreement, which is conditional, by the way, the love is unconditional. But relationships are conditional because if I all of a sudden stop respecting her, then she's well within her right to choose herself after deliberating and working to then find what's right for her. And if I want to keep her in my life, keep her loyal to me, then it's wise that I keep that little wounded child inside of her that, that's, that walks with her in my heart especially during conflict and to be able to see her not just as a victim of her if she's angry or upset with me but also as coming from those wounds and the cool part is is that she's involved in this as well she comes to every one of these trainings she's come to every one of my workshops the overview experience she comes to all of these because she's just as committed to self-study and learning as well this is not me teaching people I guide people toward back towards themselves right and I know that the best gift that she can give me and our baby is a self-loving individual Right? And so if I can honor that in her, she can honor that in me, I can honor her wounds as part of her and keep those in mind and all of the people that I'm around, Eilina and Kim who work with me, and I know that when, when I'm dealing with them and my interactions with them, they're dealing with me, that there's a little boy inside who sometimes can come out and so they, they can learn not to be at the effect of my wounding but also be able to help me and me help them, we've now started a new conversation that has to do with healing the planet because we now see ourselves in community through our wounds and, and respecting those wounds that aren't going anywhere, that are going to be walking as a part of us. This is my vision. My vision is to create a community of self-healers that are committed to self-regulating their nervous systems and with that in mind, putting the oxygen mask on themselves first, to also go and, and take on that the people they're in relationship with also are bringing their own wounds to the table. And that I am choosing to, to, to be with, with you with those wounds respecting that sometimes when you're triggered or activated that you're going to be talking to me from the perspective of those wounds that is how I knew I was ready to, to, to commit again that's an idea I'm, I'm, I'm ready to commit to that the relationships that we have become our fortress of well-being rather than the cause of our you know complete unraveling how would that look for you this is what I'm creating, and this is why uh, the, the, we have these upcoming uh, trainings. It's so that people can then take this on. Next Wednesday, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, I'm doing How to Connect to a Disconnected Child. And on the 26th of, uh, of this month, we're doing the overview experience. And I'm super stoked. We're already starting to sell out of these events, and you guys are like totally recognizing the importance of going inside rather than pointing fingers and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that this community is now starting to wanna instead of picking up the magnifying glass in relationships and saying oh you do this or fault finding and hoping that the magical other person's gonna show up that doesn't trigger you and is easy which we want a relationship of ease instead of putting that taking that magnifying glass putting that magnifying glass aside and picking up a mirror 
and being able to use your triggers as an access point to going inside rather than f to lash out and and choose people that don't trigger you. Uh, I, I I know what that's like. I moved back in with my parents to 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 dance with that concept, and I I can attest to it. It works. My life is an example of it. Having a, a woman in the the quality and caliber of somebody like Diana was not even possible for me. In fact, when somebody of that uh, stability, when I was deep in my wound, somebody who was stable and a secure attached person, I would have no interest in. I wanted that drama. I wanted the push pull. That's really the whole, you know, the toxic relationship cycle, that push pull dynamic that we feed off of that drama. That is a sign and a symptom of the trauma, and it can totally be healed. And uh, tomorrow, what I'm going to do, if you're interested, I'm going to do a group call uh, in, in a form of just kind of like a town hall meeting at noon tomorrow. I'll, I'll drop the link uh, in the in the group, and I'm going to be asking you guys some questions. What is it that you want to know? I'm going to be giving you group uh, kind of uh, tools. Uh, to, to help you regulate and co-regulate some co-regulating tools especially during this COVID-19 time it's never been more important of a time to prioritize your own healing and invest in it so I really want you to invest your time uh, into uh, making this a priority and tomorrow at noon Pacific I'm gonna be doing a group call I'm gonna drop a, a link in zoom and you're gonna come if you're interested in coming you're gonna send me a message with the biggest challenges you're going through and I'm gonna help you navigate this on a one hour free zoom call for people who are really dedicated who are gonna show up it's not gonna be recorded so it's not gonna be sent back to you and can I catch the recording it's a no. It's just going to be non-recorded, and I'm going to uh, answer some questions, help you, and maybe even do a demonstration as well of my overview method, if you're actually interested, for me to show you how to gain access to those feelings, those earlier memories, and teach you how to transform it. I'd love to share that with you and that's going to be tomorrow at noon. Let me know in the comment section. Actually send me a DM if you're going to if you're going to want a link. It's going to be an intimate setting. It's not going to be publicized for everybody. If you are on this call and you're listening then and this is intriguing to you, you're still paying attention, then I want you there. Uh, this has got to be people who are, you can't feed people who aren't hungry. I want you to be hungry to learn this and make it a priority and those are the people that I would love to give my time and expertise to uh, to help them on their journey. That's really why I'm here. Does this make sense? The disconnected child. Yes. Can we well, you want to see little Nima? Yeah, absolutely. You like that? You want to see little Nima? There it is. <laughs> Madeline, there you go. That's me. <laughs> Today. I'm getting married next week. I believe you and also understand. Perfect. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the disconnected child send link. Let me give you the link right here. Uh, how to heal from a disc, how to connect to a disconnected child. I'm going to give you the link right here. Hold on one second. If you really want to be there, how to connect to a disconnected child. If this is it, this is for you. There it is here. Perfect. There, that should be right in that should be there for you perfect there you go and the overview experience I'm gonna drop that link as well if you want one of our last spots it they have been selling out I'm really not surprised because this has been and and you know what I decided how do I create trainings where you don't have to pay for hotel you don't have to pay for food well I mean you have food in the house uh, the and to, to drop the the, the rates so that you can actually uh, participate and it's more affordable than my live trainings that people pay thousands for in hotels in um, you know parking uh, in, in in tuition for it well I made it super duper affordable from the comfort of your home uh, to to attend and I, I just dropped the links in there so that you can there's the one and I'll give you the yeah the virtual retreat so make sure you jump in and join us just just do it and here's the other part the thing that you're afraid of the most the thing that you are resisting why you can't is the exact reason why you must this is what I've observed in my own healing journey the things that I'm resistant to investing of going into feelings of sharing I'd rather do the one-on-one -on -one. I don't like the group thing those are the reasons why you must and this is 
a very powerful transformative experience and I'd love for you to be there. But see you tomorrow at noon. Let me know and I'll send you the link. I'm creating a little event and uh, I'd love to see you there. And We're going to talk deeply, more deeply about this and really give you nervous system regulating tools. If you want to attract that king in your life, you want to attract that queen in your life, if you want to attract that king in your life, then you best become a queen. A queen, not just Miss Independent Woman, but no, your ability to emotionally regulate yourself. You will not attract your king or queen unless you're able to do that. I promise you. I brought my queen in because I'm getting better and better at that, and it's a work in progress. And she's a boss, and she's committed to the same thing, and she's willing to own her shit like nobody's business. And that's why I'm committed to that process. And I'm committed to taking you along with me for the ride because there's nothing more important than feeling connected to other human beings. And I want to just let you know that I, I see you. It, you totally make sense. Your traumas make sense. Uh, the What you've endured makes sense. How you've responded to it makes sense. And you are normal. It's just when you can look from and all of the things that you feel ashamed about guaranteed I know the feeling there has there is uh, nothing that you've done or not done that hasn't been done by millions of other people not to justify bad behavior but to help you understand and make sense of your past is really critical for you to heal and I want you to know that I'm here with you doing the work with you let me know if you have any other questions and I'll see you later on tonight for another transmission for a Q&A but Hopefully see you tomorrow and definitely register for one of those events next week and in the 26th. I can't wait. And we're doing breath work again. Uh, I'm going to have these events uh, for you guys so that you can consistently heal from your past and then get the ultimate holy grail in human existence, which is to create a secure attached relationship where you actually feel safe in the relationship. And when you separate from one another, you still feel safe. In other words, there's no anxiety about getting together or getting apart. That's the hallmark of a secure attachment. Let me know what landed for you. Send me a DM if you have any other questions. And um, see you at the next perfect time.